power, power in the house tonight. So, uh, yeah, we're going to try to have this as just you know, as pleasant of a discussion as we can. Talk about the show and uh, ask some questions and make sure we can get you get you all's input, you know, as you see fit. Uh, so I'll kick it off in, with the first some introductions here, so you can know who's speaking and who we are. Uh, my name is Javier Snipes. Uh, I'm a, a, a theater actor uh, and. He also a uh, film and voice actor as well. Uh, I do work locally here with the Alliance Theater uh, and also with the working title Playwrights. And I'm also a co-host on the Alliance Theater podcast. And I will toss it over to my friend next to me. Um, my name is Anna Puerta. I am a volunteer on the Urban Fantasy Track. And I also have an MFA in film and television and have worked some in that. <laughs> with that. <laughs> Uh, my name is Gary Mitchell. Uh, yes, Star Trek fans is my real name. Uh, I am the co-director of the American Sci-Fi Classics track on the other side of the hotel. Uh, this year is our 10th year running that track. Uh, Happy anniversary. Thank, thank you. Congrats. Been coming to Dragon Con since 99. I've missed two. Well, counting last year, three. Um, and we don't count last yeah, year. I was there for <laughs> uh, and we do a Thursday night panel on YouTube and Facebook every week we've been we started it once the pandemic started so if you like this kind of panel stuff check us out find us on the youtube year and a half of content for you oh yeah awesome. i should plug the urban fantasy track has also started doing virtual content on our facebook page and our youtube so if you want to check out that as well um we, carol just pumps out the panels i don't know how she does it throughout the year yeah she really does and we're going to give the floor to our final person out of the end who's making uh, his uh, panel debut. Yes, yes. My name is Anthony Liggins. This is my first uh, panel here at Dragon Con, but this is my 21st year coming to Dragon Con. So, um, I'm also the co host of this um, Fandom Hybrid podcast. Woohoo! Um, the host is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can find this on all streaming platforms. So. I'm excited to be here. All right, y'all. Well, so let's kind of kick it off here, starting with the panel. So the concept of Project Power, a, a Netflix original movie, came out last year, 2020, starring Jamie Foxx, uh, directed by Henry Yust and Ariel Schulman. I know I'm probably saying those names incorrectly, so apologies to uh, Henry Yust, but uh, who came from like, a horror thriller background, directed Paranormal Activity 3 and 4, as well as Nerve. A uh, film with Dave Franco, which I actually kind of like. So if you haven't seen that, maybe that's something interesting to check out. So the concept, there is a pill that you can pop that can give you superpowers, but only but with two caveats. Number one, for five minutes. And number two, you don't know what superpowers you are going to get. So that is the initial the concept. Time. The first time, yes. And once yeah. you take it and you get your powers, that is the power that you will always have. But you could take the pill and literally explode. Yeah, so yeah, it's okay. up to you. So <laughs> question for the panel, kicking it off is, what were your initial impressions and initial reactions to the show, how it was done, the concept? I'll, I'll kick it off with that. I really love the concept, mm -hmm. actually. And I thought the way they kind of, a lot of times with sci-fi, it can get very, not grounded in reality it can it can go you know way out there but this it was so like i thought like, this this could actually happen you know like the the way they even explained it um it just felt um realistic in a way that that sometimes you know sci-fi doesn't always feel and i i really loved it yeah i've been a fan of superheroes most of my life and i it's not an original concept, but it was well executed, I thought. Yeah. I thought that the pill itself looked cool, that it lit up. Um, I liked the whole randomness of it. And like you said, the way they played with it, that it's based on DNA. It yeah, just, the science. Whatever yeah. random DNA it happens to lock onto. So you get one guy who's suddenly like bulletproof because turtle shell, mm -hmm. or you get somebody who's invisible, or you get somebody who just explodes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Literally, and sorry, night, night good luck. Um, mm -hmm. Bad luck being you. Uh, that was another <laughs> touch. That I like the fact that it wasn't just everybody suddenly is Superman and running around. Yeah. Right. There was a risk and edge to it. Yeah. Um, I really, I really liked the concept. Um, the first thing I thought of was Limitless. If you remember Limitless, yeah. yes, that was the first thing that came to my mind. And then um, 
there was a comic book series or series of books called Wild Cards, mm -hmm. which was very similar to that as well. And I was really looking forward to seeing it. And I, who doesn't like Jamie Fox? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, that was a, a big pull. And I think it came on like right after the old guard. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, okay, well, so I, um, Netflix is going into this superhero original thing, which I, I was kind of looking forward to. I kind of like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, Gary, you mentioned something that I want to uh, dive into, but before I dive into that, does anybody have any, like their in, in initial reaction to the show that they might have had? Just perspectives or just like initial reaction from seeing it the first time? Yeah. Okay. So, so looking at the concept, y'all, about the dangers, Gary, I, I, I think you really talked about like the dangers of what can happen with that pill. Mm -hmm. Talk about like like the for the panel, and you can take it like however y'all want it in whatever order. But the concept of the risk of you don't know what happens, you don't know what power. It's one thing if you know the powers that you're gonna get, but like the like the concept of you have no idea, and literally if you take it, you could die. Like talk about like the stakes that that gives the show and how does that change the dynamic from like any other typical superhero genre, like a Limitless or something like that that kind of dealt with that. Um, I, I came at it for, sort of from the perspective of you had this disadvantaged population that was taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, they were desperate, they were looking for something and the pill gave them their opportunity to get something they didn't have, which was power, um, and some semblance of control. And the risk of taking the pill sort of outweighed that that you know that internal desire for something bigger to be something bigger. Mm -hmm. And I think for a lot of us, especially in this society, we are always kind of looking for that, mm -hmm. wanting to be better, wanting to be something more. And I just thought Tilly was take advantage of that just for their experiment. So that that was sort of the the way I sort of approached the show, the movie when I was watching it. I think what about that line of like, um, I think I kind of loved that Robin never took it, mm. and that she just like she was like I've seen somebody blow up, and I may be willing to to deal to for my family and take other risks because she took a lot of risks yeah. throughout the film, but I'm not taking that risk. Mm -hmm. um, and I let, I really love that they had her character make that decision. And even at the end of the film, you know, like sometimes you'll have a character that is sticking to one thing, but then for the climax, you know, they- You're gonna break your one rule. You're gonna break their yeah. one rule, right? And she never, she never broke her rule. And even the, the song at the end, in the credits mm -hmm. was, you know, her word was her power. She didn't need the pill. Um, she could stand up and and get her power through other means. Yeah, she found her. her she found her. Inside. Yeah. Um, so, anyways. Yeah, because I just think about Newt, which another thing is like Poor it's Newt. pure storyline that everybody's power kind of did theme to what they are, you know, newts are known as, you know, salamanders are associated with fire, so him becoming a human torch was thematically fitting, but what it did to him yeah, was terrible. And I did like the fact also they show why you don't take it while you're already on it, because that was another question I would have had if they hadn't answered it there. All right, well, if it lasts five minutes, why don't I just take another one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you just melt and die. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But I like that. It does mean that it does explain why some people won't take it or why. Yeah. It, because it's like, if you, you know, honestly, that is something I think the movie did address is the fact that, like you were saying, if people will seize power, especially the powerless. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it was important it was set in New Orleans mm -hmm. after Katrina with people who were desperate. Oh, you're stealing my thunder. That's exactly where I was going to go. <laughs> is you just talked about it, and Anthony, you brought it up when you were making that point. Is the crucialness of like the setting like like because you don't see a lot of things set in new orleans you know right. and it's just you know talking about that setting and what that does for this particular story you were hinting on it is there anything else y'all want to add into that because i think that is so crucial in talking about when it's a, a community of folks who are desperate 
the like how that changes the dynamic of what they're seeking in regards to power and what that power is. Um, I think that's so crucial and truly makes this set apart from a lot of different superhero stories. Was there anything else y'all wanted to talk about in regards to that setting in New Orleans in particular? Because it is a character in the movie. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they make sure that they kind of showcase the city yeah. in addition to everything else. So. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I even wrote in my notes right here, like, the location, New Orleans, very mm -hmm. intentional. Like, I mean, the system has failed New Orleans Utterly. countless times. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and the fact that the, they decided to test run this on this city that's already gone through so much, it's just a sort of another way that they're using these people, you know, um, it seems intentional from the government, the, well, I don't, not necessarily a government agency, we don't really know. Yeah, that's a little not, one. It's not They're definitely military clear. contract. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely some sort of military contracting people that have some sort of power and money using the people of New Orleans um, to nefarious ends, you know? Um, but also the desperation of the people in New Orleans is goes hand in hand with that, you know? It's, yeah, it's, that's a... I mean, when, when you look at like Robin's story, you know, mm -hmm. to show where the desperation, she's a really good person. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't think that someone like her would sell drugs, but her mother is sick and she needs the money. And, and this is what she's doing to do that. And, you know, it's difficult. It, it's sort of like a statement on what is a difficult thing that people in those situations have to do, which is they're taking advantage of the people who are with them. Like she's selling this drug that could potentially kill people, and but yet she's doing it for a reason. She she wants to get medicines to help her mom. Her mom is, I guess she has cancer. They, they're not. Really uh, I think clear. it was diabetes. 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 It, was, but, you know. it was insulin. I think. Yeah, yeah, she needed insulin, to, and if she didn't get the insulin, like a lot of diabetics, if you don't get your insulin, you're gonna die. You're, you're gonna yeah. die. And, and that's that's what she was faced with a desperate situation. And once again, we're talking about a population that's desperate. And Robin is reflective of that as well. I got to follow up to that. Gary, what you have? What do you have to follow? Well, I was going to say that's also, I think, really informs her relationship with Frank. And that's why he doesn't bust. Uh, there are two reasons I think he doesn't bust her. Okay. Is the fact that he understands her situation and why she's doing it. And the fact that he needs the pills himself. Okay. And I'm really not sure which one is the stronger motivation for him. Yeah. Yeah. I think he definitely cares about her. And he also cares about the city yeah. a lot. I mean, his love for New Orleans, I mean, even they made it sort of visual by, in the beginning, when he's going to work, he's wearing a, a jersey, mm -hmm. a Saints jersey, instead mm -hmm. of like a uniform or like a suit and tie sort of detective outfit. Yeah. Um, because his, his love for the city, I mean, he would do anything for New Orleans, really. Yeah. And, and I think that that is reflective of, to answer your question, he loves the city so much that he will let her continue to do it because he can get it to come back, yeah, to yeah. save the city. Okay, that, that, okay. That's where I was going. Let me go into that way. because I got a question about that, the ambiguity of those two characters, Robin and Frank. Because to the notions that we're bringing out, they have such love for this city, particularly thinking about Frank, you know, sworn, mm -hmm. sworn to protect. Yes. You know, we know there's a lot of like, you know, issues that were, that were uh, discussions we're having nationally with, with police and so forth. But as this character is presented, he is a true blue guy who is here to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, but does that justify him allowing this person to sell these pills to a community that is the most underserved uh, and to frankly contribute to destroying that community? Where, where, what is the line for Frank where he ceases to be the upstanding guy? Because right now he's playing both sides and I don't know, and that's making him very, very gray and maybe even leaning towards the dark. Yeah. I think the big thing with him is, is the simple fact that she's not the only dealer. I think if she was the only dealer, he'd just shut her down. But the fact that there are other ways for other people to get these pills, he knows he needs them to keep up. It, it becomes a war of escalation. I think. And, that's, and I think that's how he justifies it to himself. Yeah. I'm not sure it's really as justifiable as that. 
Well, I don't see. I'm not saying he's right. No, 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 I'm just no, saying, no. yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I know. What you, I know what you mean. That that's what he thinks. But really, I don't. I mean, it's shady. And <laughs> well, I like it. Well, it's shady. It's shady. <laughs> and he really sh is it. A, is it more about? I think it's more about him wanting power. Okay. Talk than than it is about. Um, I mean, why do people come become cops in the first place? Oh, there are a lot of reasons. You know, not all of them are good. Um, and I'm not saying that there's there's ways to serve a city um, that you love that don't include becoming a, a police officer, right? Um, and him, his decision to become a cop that probably had something to do with wanting uh, some power over people. Um, so. You know, it's not that much of a stretch that he's really doing this because he wants power. Um, no. I, don't, I don't know if I could go. I don't know no. if I can go along with that. Okay. You know, I don't think we know not. enough. We don't know enough about his character. Like his yeah. dad and his grandfather could have been cops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He could have been the yeah, kid when Katrina so hit and be like, you know, this is how I can help protect the city after Katrina. He loves the yeah. city. Yeah. So he may have felt powerless and. The way he wanted power was to become a cop, but that was the power to help serve the city. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. they may have contributed to this idea of escalation, like the bad guys are using the pill. The only way we can combat them is if we do it too. And he wants to protect the city, so he's okay. Gonna, he's yeah, gonna and so if, if, if I may, Gary, uh, sure. just, just to kind of piggyback on that thought line that Anna and Anthony are on right now. That's the thing I think that is so interesting because if you're you, you mentioned like that loss of power and when you are the authority figure and you are experiencing a loss of power that you can't even comprehend because like like he tells Courtney B. Vance, like the chief, that you know, we can't even you know, we're not even fighting on the same turf with these guys right now. Mm -hmm. It's it's my question is it is where what is that line? Uh, I, I keep worrying about what is that line that Frank will is capable of crossing to, to further protect the city because it's only a matter of time before he becomes addicted and you can probably even make the argument that maybe he is addicted to it mm -hmm. uh, at, at this at this current place because with something like that it's logical that when you have that kind of power is how do you turn it off mm -hmm. so it's it's thinking more on that concept of when you are the person of authority and you and you lose that power and you're watching your city be taken away, how far will you go? Would the, is there, there is no law yeah. at that point. Yeah. Well, I think that's one of the biggest lines between him and Hart. Okay. And if I may quote Kanye, do you have the oh, power yes. to let power go? Art wants nothing to do with that power. He only takes it, like you were saying, there's those people who, I will never do yes. this until they get to that point. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I know how powerful I am. I know what my power is. I could have stopped this 40 minutes into the movie, but I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. Whereas Frank is very much, I need the power to keep up. And then he can't let it go. I think he was already addicted to power before he had power. Mm. Mm. I think, like, let's say that the um, military group was successful in creating a, a long-term pill, right? The pill that, the pill that gives you the powers the forever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think that Frank would have taken that pill. Yeah. I do not think that any of the other characters would have, right? Because I, I don't think for Frank it's like, I just need to solve this problem and then we don't need any of this, I think he would want that long-term power over, you know what I mean? Over to fight crime or however he sees that he could serve. And I'll put this out here to the audience. I mean, there- I'm not saying that he's coming from a bad place. Exactly, exactly. I mean, there yeah, is I, don't, I like him. I think he was, I mean, generally. There is a the notion that your, your passion, your greatest passion can also be your greatest detriment. Yeah. Because if it is so, if you are so passionate about it, then there there are no stops that, that you will go that, that are in your way to yeah. to achieve that passion. And if his passion is that protecting that city at all costs, I mean that can be kind of how villains are created. You know? mm -hmm. So so I don't know. So I don't know if there's any you know, further thoughts yeah. on that before we go to the next one. Or just, uh, 
Well, I was going to actually say that, that if they were going to continue the series, that he mm -hmm. would have become the villain. Because yeah. there would have been a need to stop him from continuing to use the, the, yeah. the pill. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not completely disagreeing with you mm -hmm. no. about Frank. It's just, I think he sees, he sees the pill, he sees the power as a way to protect the city against those who also use it. Yeah. So, like you said, if she was the only one selling it, he would shut her down. Yeah. But she's not. There are other people who are using it who are bad, and he feels like, I need to use it to do the same thing. That's why he took it to stop the bank robbery. He didn't know that the bank robbery, well, I don't know. I don't think he knew that the bank robbery had power, but he yeah. took it anyway, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. Just to be bulletproof, to walk just, in there. Yeah, just yeah. to be able to go in there and, and stop whoever it was. So, so that's what I'm saying, he, he would knew. use it against non-powered criminals. I think mm -hmm. just because of the threat. Just that because, because of, yeah. Criminal would Even if there was only mm -hmm. one like have long term been to pill New available, I think he would take mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I say. Have you been to New Orleans? A lot of times, most of the jobs that are available there are, are city or hospital. You rarely have the middle to have a decent job to pay and have a nice lifestyle. So if you take that, if you notice, even just from the news when I got when I watched the the, the movie. A lot of them on welfare as a police officer, very low income, mm -hmm. and then their enemies are who they have to deal with, have money. Mm -hmm. These drug dealers and the people that just go out and kill, they have money. So when, as far as the power, he does need to match that because he knows what's already out there without the pill. So if mm -hmm. he does have the pill, he can at least say, I can go home at night. And that's how I looked at it, more of a protection armor opposed to him just wanting to have the power because he knows there's more powerful already out there just how the city is mm -hmm. on the yeah. lower end yeah like, that kind of ties back into what we were saying earlier how it's important it was set in new orleans yeah. that it's a character because it, this movie would have happened completely different in new york yeah. or in los angeles oh, yes. yeah. Why so? mm -hmm. yeah, because of that dis desperate yeah. population who are you're either, I mean, it's the American system as it is right now, boiled down to its essence of you've got the top and you have the bottom. Mm -hmm. And there's really no room in, in the between, middle. Yeah. And we could talk for an entire hour about how New Orleans has been screwed over, oh, yeah. especially with, you know, after Katrina, the land developers moving in, kicking out the people who had places to live that they could afford, and now they're becoming upscale. I mean, it's, it's tragic. So these are people desperate for something to hold on to. Like you said, your choices are pretty much hospital, yeah. cop, or yeah. criminal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my question then uh, along those lines is to, to the question of Frank, and then there's some other things we'll go to, but just to this question of Frank, because I think it says so much about this show and the questions that it's bringing up uh, and, and, and why the setting of New Orleans is so specific. We're talking about Frank, but what, what are the thoughts on if other cops decide, you know, decided to start taking the pill as well? Oh, and what, where does that go? Like, what if we have the situation where there is the very real world situation of a, a, a cop in a bad moment here with someone, the pill is popped, and all of a sudden the, the, the situation escalates? Mm -hmm. Like, is that the thing? Like, does the show, does the movie do enough to kind of bring that up, or, or what are the thoughts on, on that in the world building of the show, of the movie? a little bit of that just because the military group wants it to make super soldiers and that's sort of a you know a police force of its own in a way um so i think the idea of it is there but they definitely don't address it on the local level i don't think i don't i don't remember do you guys have any thoughts the, the thing that that okay Sometimes I have issues with the writers. And I think the writers. <laughs> I actually looked up who wrote this and where they were from and like what, like, I was like, what ethnicity are they? Like, I need to know a lot about this person that wrote this because I want to, I really want to just try to understand. Some, some of the powers were too on the nose. Yeah. Like, it didn't seem okay. too random for me because it almost seemed like there was a mental aspect to it. Like, Frank wanted to protect people. And therefore, his power was to be bulletproof. Mm -hmm. um, 
the the main guy I forgot the other main guy who was trying to sell sell the power. He wanted to be big, and so he got big yeah. one of the bodyguards. So he yeah. took it. He was strong. Mm -hmm. One of the fighters, he was able to fight like you know, bend his body with all kinds of grip. So it seemed like a lot of the powers were too on the nose for me for it to be mm -hmm. too so random as it was supposed to be. I'm saying all that to say that it. I don't know. It just some of it didn't really feel right. Um, I forgot where I was going. That was a question. <laughs> well, no, 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 I mean, let, let's but, segue that. I mean, let, let's, let's talk about that line of the thing, some things that don't work for you in this particular Yeah, that, that, was one, that was one of the things that didn't work yeah. for me. And so the question about Frank and other cops, mm -hmm. so therefore, what kind of powers would all the other cops have? Mm -hmm. Like, are they willing to take that risk that they would blow up or get some power that they didn't like? Like if you think about wild cards, in wild cards they created a drug that sort of did the same thing. You know, they had aces, I think it was aces, aces deuces, and jokers. and jokers. And jokers were like the bad guys, they had the power of the bad guys. Aces were people who had the premium powers, and the deuces were aces who had like powers that meant nothing. Like are some of the cops going to get powers that meant nothing? What's, what's that going to do to them? Like you take this pill and you think you're going to have this awesome power. And it's like, oh, I can, um, I can, I can turn stuff into glass or something like. You know, we we're wacky off the walls. I know they're supposed to be related to animals, but like I'm a chameleon. Okay, that works. But how does that work as a cop? So you're gonna be an undercover cop who can blend in with the background. But what if that's not what you want to do? Yeah. You know, so it creates a whole different kind of situation for other cops taking the pill. Yeah. So and also, if like you're a captain or a lieutenant, or if you're trying to be a detective and you're suddenly bulletproof, are you going to be sent in on the front lines mm -hmm. instead of, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, yeah. Kind of, it could change their... What Frank tries to do in that one scene. Yeah, the power structure um, inside the force. Yeah, like you may get something that you, you may not want to be a tank. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you may yeah. want to actually be a forensic guy. Yeah. He, you want to do blood splatter. You don't want to be the first one into, you know, a hostage situation. So what, what does that do to the psyche of the people involved? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, because that is a discussion we're having in the real world right now of what do we do to escalate or de-escalate the police? Mm -hmm. And what happens if we suddenly have a super, I mean, does it turn into the boys? Mm -hmm. Oh God, no, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You suddenly have this elite group of un... And then I think some of that may, they may just be saving, but if they do get a sequel, that's a, that is a storyline they could follow up on. What happens? One, what happens. So that may be why they didn't touch that just yet. But it's definitely a question of what happens when you have an elite group of cops who already feel untouchable, yeah. suddenly are literally untouchable. Any other contr uh, contributions from uh, uh, Anthony started his own, but we're just talking about some of the other things that we didn't like, or, or maybe like like a little bit lesser from this one. Mm. I'll say as much as I love Joseph, Joseph Gordon Levitt, I wonder what it would have been like to have cast a uh, actor of color, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what that would have done to the socio political discussion of the movie. Because mm -hmm. in the end, it's like it's just another you know I love him like I said, but it's another white cop in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I actually think that could have added a lot to the connection that he has with Robin, possibly too. Mm -hmm. If yeah. he was, if he was a cop of color, who maybe had come from Robin's neighborhood or something like that. I think there's a lot of things you can do, maybe with that connection as well, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think his daughter. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of wanted to. Well, I guess this could happen in a sequel. But it's like I wanted to know more about why they were, um, or how they were using her, maybe particularly. I mean, I understand that, you know, she inherited and they wanted to sort of see how they could use that. But um, I feel like we didn't really get to see very much of her at all. It was kind of like they got to her and then the movies. Yeah, she's, she's a plot device, not a character. Yeah, she's a, she was not really a character. And even like if, if my son was, or my, my daughter was missing, like, 
feel like I would be a little bit, I don't know, maybe, maybe Jamie Foxx is just like too cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're like, not wrong there. Yeah. That's like that's just him. He's just too cool. But I don't feel like I would be as cool as he was. Like he's a little he would, too, too, too together. Yeah, he was a little too <laughs> together to have a, a daughter that's been missing and kidnapped. I don't know. Like, I, I, I think I kind of agree with you. Like the first, the second time I watched it because I watched it again, mm -hmm. I realized when they were in the accident and they took his daughter, when he went to go find me, he was wearing the same shirt. So like that happened the same day, but he seemed to be really kind of calm really about calm. the whole situation. Yeah. At that point, mm -hmm. and I don't know was it because of his military background, was he special forces? I guess we don't know enough about him, but he just seemed for it to seem like it just happened. Yeah. He seemed to be. Really and he kind of like I mean, there's him. this, I think, an intentional sort of father daughter relationship between um, him and Robin, mm -hmm. you know, and. It's almost like I don't know that I would be taking another child under my wing when my child is missing like I would be so consumed by the fear of what's happening to my child I don't know I mean I see how it I mean they did a good job and and they show showing that relationship but I don't know see I, he's a little bit too cool for me <laughs> I, I like the movie a lot yeah mm -hmm. I like the movie. but the movie seemed like this is Give me a concept film mm -hmm. of a series. Yeah, and so they, yeah it's it definitely was, a pilot. It seemed like it was like a whole season of a series mm -hmm. crammed into a two hour movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was like, this is what the whole series is kind of, it's like a pitch. Mm -hmm. This is what the season is going to be like. This mm -hmm. is what the show is about. Um, because we could see more of the development of the relationship yeah. between Frank and Robin, between Art and Robin, Art and Frank. That's something that just seems like it would be a stretch over a long period of time, as opposed to how how fast a lot of this stuff happens. In the yeah. yeah. And and to your point about his daughter, I also wanted a little bit more, but I think the writers tried to get a little bit. Well, the writer tried to get a little bit cutesy with it when he mm -hmm. um, had the woman in charge of Tilios give us the Henrietta Lacks. Um, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, history lesson, mm -hmm. and that was supposed to tell us about her. Yeah, that, that felt out of nowhere. It, it <laughs> did, and, and it was this long <laughs> time <laughs> explanation of Henry Lex where you could just tell us what you were doing with her. Yeah, right. Instead mm -hmm. of giving, and I understand that you want to educate people, mm -hmm. but that just seemed like a little bit yeah. out of place. Yeah. Literally, I was just like, like, is this the moment to be telling that story? Like here, and right now, is just it, it. It felt very out of place, and and very just on to what you said earlier about just being on the nose. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about our lead, the, the Academy Award winner, Jamie Fox, uh, and kind of like we've talked a little bit on, on on how he works in the part, but just other thoughts of him as the lead of this film, and like his journey, and it does he work in the part? Is he overall convincing? You know, does he does he carry this 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 this, this movie as the lead, or this or does it get stolen from him? Does someone else does? Hmm. I'll let one of you guys look. But I keep going first. Okay. Um, I just don't want to go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think he absolutely nailed it. I think he absolutely did an awesome job carrying this movie. If you look at the cast, I mean, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is, is a great actor. And Corner B. Vance is in there for all of what? Three, <laughs> three four minutes. Greatly yeah. underutilized. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, who yeah. else do you got? Mm -hmm. You know, um, Machine Gun Kelly is, who knows who he is? You know, really? Yeah. So, <laughs> which you, which you, <laughs> shout, out, shout out Machine Gun Kelly, wherever you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 what you, so what you get is you get Jamie Fox and, 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 and Jamie Fox can carry a movie. I mean, yes, he can. he's very charismatic, he's very funny. I'm sure a lot of that stuff was ad lib. Um, he's really good at creating relationships with other actors and other characters, and I think he absolutely carried the movie. If it wasn't, if it were not for him and those moments that he gave us, where he shows you how he can change, like when he becomes the guy with the can to get in the beer can, yes. and as soon as he walks to the door, everything changes about him. He's a great actor and he's a chameleon. He's he was perfect for this role because of what it demanded, and I, I thought he did a really good job, despite 
the lack of <clears throat> abilities and other characters and other actors, he 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 he, he breathed life into the movie. I thought. Yeah, he is very charismatic. He always has been. Um, and you were talking earlier about how he you thought he was a little too cool. I literally think that was his military training kicking in. He switched off Dan. He switched yeah. off and had gone straight into <clears throat> military. I'm on a mission. This is my goal. Whatever I have to do. Mm -hmm. Whether it's make this guy burn himself up, <laughs> trick the, uh, lock this girl in my trunk, yeah, you know, whatever it takes, he's gonna do. And I like the fact that, that was the other thing I liked about it, is he it wasn't easy for him. He had to follow the clues. He had to make the hard choices. He it wasn't just a piece of you know a cakewalk. He had to find her. Yeah. And I like the way he built the rapport both with um, the girl, Robin, was, Robin oh. and Frank, and uh, Frank. I thought they, I love the fact that Frank didn't trust him. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact he didn't trust Frank. Because he knew Frank was taking the bill. <clears throat> but the fact that they were able to, to come to understand each other. I, I love the scene in the car when they're stopped by the train. And he's like, you've got to let me go. You've got to let me go or they're going to kill me and you. I thought that was a great scene. And I thought he really sold at the end the, I don't want to do this. But I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. And Jamie Foxx, what you think? I mean, he's a great actor. I don't like. There's. He's just such a great actor. There's not really much I can't like complain about him. Of course, he was great in the role. I think that Robin did bring in some of those um, more emotional moments uh, for me. I really liked her character a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Because he definitely does, I mean, he's in that military mode and, you know, he's throwing her in her trunk and doing what he has to do. Um, and I think she really sort of brings out the emotional side of the film. Yeah. Um, so I think she's essential as well. And um, she's the one that kind of gets him to break out of that yeah. and start being human. And also, I mean, in that scene when, um, with the biggie, uh, when, Frank and with the Hulk, that the Hulk guy? Yeah. yeah, with the Hulk. <laughs> yeah, like Biggie Smalls. That's the guy's name. That's what they call him. His name's Biggie. He's that's, back. That's, what, that's yes. just what they cool. call him. Gotcha. So with, with the Hulk, uh huh? Yeah, with the Hulk. Yeah, um, <laughs> the guy from when, Westworld, right? When um, yeah, when uh, Art and Frank first meet, um, and Frank has to to give him the line that Robin told him so mm -hmm. that Frank, so that Art doesn't kill him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a sort of another, like, he would have killed him mm -hmm. if, if um, Robin had not, you know, put and put her heart into that situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, for me, I, I, I think, I think uh, the actor playing Robin, you have her name up there. I don't know, uh, it, it's, I can't remember. Do Dominique Yeah, that's uh, right, Dominique Fishback. Uh, almost steals the movie. I think, I think yeah. uh, mm -hmm. for a, a, a teen actor, uh, she has so many levels to it, yeah. and, I don't think she's and a, yeah, I don't think she's a teen. She's not a teen. In, in real life, let's look it up. Let's wow. look it up. I think she's like twenty eight. Oh, she's thirty. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. She's a girl. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's a girl woman. Well, I was not expecting oh, that. Oh, that changes the whole she's, interpretation yeah, she, of her. She's like, yeah, she's thirty years old. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, because in the movie, she's still in high school. She's a senior. Yeah, she's That's a actually one of my favorite moments when she has the fantasy about doing the rap. Yeah, that long yeah. teacher, yeah. which yeah, was funny. sweet, it by was the way. Like but then that. when it, and when it was happening, yeah. whereas it gets to the end, I was like, this is a bit much. And then we reveal it's all in her head. I was like, oh, okay. Anthony, thank you for just blowing yeah, my mind. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. She oh, was, no, 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 please. When, when it came out, she was, she was 29, she was 28 when they filmed. You just blew yeah. my world. <laughs> I had no idea if you could look casting. that up. Like, I was like, oh, sure, she, she, of course she's a team. Okay. Uh, well, I wonder if she's as good as she is. Well, there you go. And she's yeah. also, I'm just now looking at her IMDb. She's been in some some stuff. She's she was in the Henry, Henry the Lacks movie. Yeah, oh, she's she, no, she wasn't. No, she um, was. she's uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. Oh, yeah, she was in that. And um, the Hate You Give. Huh? Um, yeah, there you go. So some big. Some other big projects. All right, so shout out to Dominique Fishback for uh, yeah. so like for bringing it in that part and for 
folks that uh, are looking way younger than I got here. So, I totally uh, bought her as a teenager. I absolutely bought it. One hundred percent. So no, no. So uh, I'll give it to you on that. Uh, okay. So. So, some fun stuff here. Looking at the powers, you kind of talked about it a little bit at the top, Anthony. Which of the powers was the coolest, and which of them was just like that was just dumb and that we saw? <laughs> um, I mean, I, if if you were me, I would want Frank's power, the bulletproof. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't want to be cold. I don't want to be <laughs> cold. Yeah. And I don't like it to be too hot. I don't want things to melt when I touch them. You know, um, I don't want to have to break my bones to have more bones. You know, mm. don't want to get have all this loose skin. So yeah, just make me bulletproof, and I'll just avoid the bullets. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have to say, I love the touch of the fact that he, when he got shot just as the power was fading. That he got the wealth and that his yeah. eye stayed messed mm -hmm. up through the whole rest of the movie. Mm -hmm. That was a nice little piece of continuity that a lot of other movies have not done at all. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. That and, and we saw the same thing with Machine Gun Kelly. You know, America's great actor. Is that? You know, <laughs> I'm sorry again. Shout out to you, brother. Whatever you are. But just, uh, just the repercussions of there are consequences for this. Yeah. yeah. And these he constant reminders. Scars. Yeah, scars. that there is a price to pay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was saying the scars. Like yeah, 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 yeah. That that for all of that for everything you take, there is a, there is a price for this power that you're getting. And I kind of like that morality of that. Mm -hmm. that, it, that that this power doesn't come without a without a without a sacrifice or or a give in some way. Yeah. So, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I do agree with you. Like I was saying, it's it's I think just the nature of fiction that these powers were a little on the nose mm -hmm. for most of these people. But that's just the nature of we're telling a story. Yeah. In the real world, it probably would have been a little more random. You know, the real world. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But of the ones that got out there, I actually like Chameleon Guy a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought the way they did that power, the way they did it on screen, worked really well. It was cool. mm -hmm. He blended in nicely. I lost a little fact they did the bit with the throw paint on him. That way you can yeah. still see him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And also, you get, like when he's moving, you can sort of see the movement. Yeah. And I thought that was really the Of uh, the things he was reflecting off yeah, of? Yeah, yeah. yeah the was things he was reflecting off of. Yeah. The effects were really good. Yeah, the yeah. effects were really great on that. But if I could pick a power, I would either go with claw shrimp power <laughs> that Jamie Foxx had, yeah. just because it was so incredibly powerful. Yeah. Like, don't mess with me. Or the the head thug who was super strong. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to have that super strength. I'm going to pound my way in through this door. Mm -hmm. You can't stop me. I, I just want to say, I think... The ice one was just so disappointing. Yeah. How <laughs> well, so? How so? Just, I mean, it was just like... Couldn't even leave the cage with it. Like, <laughs> she couldn't freeze the glass. At least Machine Gun Kelly was like in his apartment. I mean, he had some scars, but he, mm -hmm. you know, he he wasn't. He couldn't. Yeah, I don't know. He could burn up people who were messing with him. Yeah, he could burn up people. Some people who were messing with him. The ice girl. She couldn't even leave the little. And it killed her. Yeah, and it killed her. Well, you know, I, th I guess they were establishing that you know she you know, maybe wasn't the brightest bulb when they, when they, when they kind of. Well, she yeah that yeah yeah you know, but. True. Anthony, you have something else you're adding on? Oh, I, I was just going to say, I don't know if you're going to talk about this, but um, I wanted to talk about, or I just wanted to mention, this is a superhero movie, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but we didn't see our superhero have a power until the very end. Mm -hmm. So we talked about Robin, her internal power being the power of her words. We saw her, you know, talk her out of situations or use words to help people. With Frank, it was just his determination, not sorry, Art. Yeah. With Art, his determination in all these situations. Like I realized, again, the second viewing, that he beat everybody up. Like mm -hmm. he took everybody out in that room where he was the last man standing, he and the other guy. Mm -hmm. And I was so busy focusing on, on the girl freezing to death <laughs> that I didn't realize that he was literally taking everyone out in that room. And yeah. he didn't use any powers. Yeah. Yeah, it does, it does go to show that, you know, stress that point, just because you have powers doesn't mean you can't be stopped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, the, I mean, the, one of the first scenes, right, is him taking out uh, Machine Gun Kelly, new. Um, <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, who is like on fire. <laughs> yes. And, and holds him under the water, you know, like. He, he you don't he didn't need powers to um, 
to take out. Well, and how does he stop the Hulk? I mean, he stops the, he literally blows up the Hulk. I mean, yeah. just like, so it's, it's, I think that's a really great point, Anthony, and, and about, one, it, it, and how it defines the character in a couple of ways. How, how he's, he doesn't want to use this power because of how destructive it is. So basically, he's, he's doing everything he can as a soldier uh, to, to just with his training to, to get, the, get the job done without having to resort to, the, resort to this power. Mm -hmm. That power is literally the last thing he wants to do mm -hmm. because it's so destructive. And I think that was very smart from them uh, and from a character building standpoint to kind of give like a code to him that he, like, he truly understands the danger and the cost of, the, of, of, the, of these pills. So whatever he can do to not use them but still function mm -hmm. is what he's gonna do. Yeah, because he almost kills Robin. At the, and when he does finally have to use his power, he kills a lot of people, almost kills her. I love the fact he doesn't kill directly the head bad lady, that she gets squashed. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, she gets the <laughs> Disney villain death. You know, like, well, the main so, hero didn't kill her. Why so? Do you think that changes something for him? If, 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 if he, if I, he think it, I think for a lot of American audiences it does. <clears throat> It's always been acceptable for James Bond to kill like 60 mooks on his way into the main boss, but once he gets to him, well, I can't kill you in cold blood. You know, yeah. it's stupid American morality. I can't be the killer. Yeah. You just killed 16 guys getting in this room. Yeah, but you know, they didn't have names. They don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and you were contemplating something. You got something or are you okay? No, I was going to make a stupid joke about Disney villains. Oh, go for it. This is always the place for that. No, I, like that. <laughs> I just watched Cinderella like two nights ago, so I'm here for it. <laughs> so, so we mentioned a little bit uh, as, as we, we kind of got about like 10 minutes or so left here. Uh, we mentioned a little bit earlier talking about the ideas of a sequel. Like, do you have, like, if there was a sequel, uh, what you would like to see, uh, a, a few things that you would really like to see in it. Frank becoming the villain. Ooh. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think that that's where he is tracking. Mm -hmm. like, some of the best villain hero stories are what is it? With the hero and the villain start out as friends. Mm -hmm. The the unbreakable thing. Yeah, they, they start out as friends, and and with Frank. In the, in his mind, he's the, what is the villains? They're the hero of their own story. Frank yeah. seems perfect for that. He seems perfect for I'm doing this to protect my city, and like you said, I'm going to do it at any cost. Yeah. Whoever gets hurt, whoever gets in my way, they're just going to be in my way, and I'm going to take care. Frank seems like he's perfect for that, and the only person that's going to be able to stop him is Art. Yeah, we saw over and over again through the movie how much how far. Frank's willing to go to do what he thinks is right. Takes the pill, goes into the bank robbery, stands up to his boss. Go, you know, his boss points him in the direction, and he keeps going after Art. I mean, there's just no way that people are going to stop coming after uh, Art's daughter. Yeah, she's, she's too valuable. Yeah, yeah, she's way too valuable. I'm not sure that, like, she could ever lead a normal life. Ever, um, so I don't know if they're. I mean, he's going to be on the run. I don't think. I don't know that they, they would come back to New Orleans necessarily. Um, but it would be interesting to see a different setting or another city that they are uh, testing power um, in, uh, or something like that. I don't know. I, and then obviously we'll just see like Robin in the background on the TV screen as a famous rapper. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> living a happy life, um, unbothered <clears throat> by all of this, because she deserves some happiness. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's like, that would be like the third movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah where, where, where she comes and intervenes yeah. between Frank and Art to <laughs> stop them from killing each other using her words. Using yeah. her words. Right. Yes. Yes. Gary, did you have something about what you would like to see in the sequel? I know what I don't want to see, and I don't want to don't. see them kill off Art's daughter. Her, because that is almost always, the fridging is almost one of the first things Hollywood always loves to do, to push the hero. I don't want that. Mm -hmm. uh, I would I like, like to, mm -hmm. And especially when she's so powerful, sometimes it's that, it's that Jean Grey thing that we yeah. have to, the only way we can deal with her is to kill her. Yeah, we don't know what to do with her, we don't know how to keep her from, you know, taking over the story, so. 
Um, I, but I would I'd love to see that. I'd love to see them deal with what you were saying, Frank doing what he thinks is the right thing, creating this powered police force and just abusing it, thinking he's doing the right thing and someone's got to come in and either chalk him down or he goes full Homelander. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. What do you think? The seats. Sure. Things you, we'll things you want to see and especially don't want to see. What I, what I think is going <laughs> to... I, d I don't I don't think they're gonna make Frank the villain, even though like I feel like I've made a pretty compelling argument <laughs> this whole panel. <laughs> I don't know why that could happen. Um, I don't know that that's I don't know that that's where they're gonna go with it. Um, I, th I feel like they're gonna bring in another like military kind of person mm -hmm. that's gonna try to go after you know, yeah. and it's gonna be that, and they're gonna maybe kill the daughter. Um, but I don't know. Maybe they'll surprise us. Just to check in with the audience, was, uh, uh, if anyone had any answers, uh, the desire to see a sequel and what you would like to see in the sequel, if you had an answer. Yeah. Do you guys want to see a sequel? Just like, yes? Yes. Yes? I, not as a movie, as a series. Ooh. You want a series? You want a series? Mm -hmm. Because it's more scientific as far as what they want to do with the daughter. So I would like to see that kind of mm. unfold in different ways it can go with who the powers that be are in control. And an interesting point about that is that I think a series of Jamie and his daughter kind of on the run mm -hmm. could yeah. be just a hell of a series. Yeah. Kind of series. Of yeah. it's, a, it's suddenly the Incredible Hulk, you know, once or twice a week, yeah. he claw shrimps out. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, or, or just like the people he encounters like on the way, because I mean, with, with things like this, like we just saw it in New Orleans, but as we it know, be bigger than who Orleans. knows like where this thing That's has been, right. you know, at, at this point. Do we think Jamie Foxx would sign on to a series? As, a, as an actor, I mean, if you show up with a big enough don't yeah. trip of money, yeah. we talking yeah. about Netflix, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he's also hosting his own game show right now, so that might yeah. be that might make it difficult for him to do something long events. term like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the beauty of it is, they could spend a month and a half, six to eight weeks, and knock out the whole series. Yeah. Yeah. That's, what that's what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't. Oh, I didn't talk about my favorite, like one of my favorite moments. Oh, well, I, I got okay. a question about that. Okay. My next okay. question okay. is, you know, because uh, as we're getting down on time here, I got two more questions. Okay. Number one Shoot. is, what is what did you like best or favorite moments from the film? Okay, excellent. I, I was just jumping on top of your question. No, 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 Sorry. we're ready. I love it. I'm, yeah, no, and the when they're in the veterinary um, uh, mm -hmm. clinic and... Um, and he wakes up and is like, what are you doing? You're doing this, What are you? what's going on? And then they have that moment. Um, he gives us an inspiring speech to her about, um, you know, just how the society uses people. And I mean, it's just, it's such a, I went, I, I, I tried to like record it um, mm -hmm. to like transcribe it, but then it was too much writing, and I, I I'm sorry, <laughs> guys. I was like, I'm gonna have to pause this like a hundred times to write this down. So. And I think she didn't commit. She didn't I didn't, I didn't commit. I didn't commit to the notes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't commit to the notes. I'm sorry, but it was, it was such a good speech, and it was one of my favorite moments. And then it, they also called back to it in that moment when um, she sent Frank in. Yeah. She used the, his yes. line from that. Um, so. Yeah, I think that was I think that was a highlight of, of Jamie Foxx in that moment was yeah. kind of showing yeah, it was, what yeah. kind of like he's so good at. Yeah, it's like that connection. That connection. Yeah, wow. it was great. He did great. Cool. Yeah. I really loved um, this. Uh, uh, touching off of that scene, I love when he made her rap battle at him. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, that was great. That was cool. Um, and I had my other favorite scene and just flopped right out of my head. Give me a mm -hmm. And she was able come to come back her. to me. Come back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The vet, the vet, Clinton scene was one of my favorite scenes. But mm -hmm. the other favorite scene is oh. a scene that reflects the chemistry between Frank and Robin when she is on the earwig telling him, "Do the clinics with him." Oh yeah. And he does it with the guard. Yeah. 
And, and, and I just thought that was a funny moment. The other one is when Joseph Gordon-Levitt puts the towel on and walks out of the bathroom. <laughs> yes! And he puts it off with that, her mom. That, that was some zany... And just like, so honey! <laughs> and she's like, who the hell is this white that, man in my house? That, <laughs> and why is he naked? <laughs> why is he naked? That, and then, and then was, the call back at the that end. Why do you have a mom's phone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, so I quite, why do you know what you're doing? Why do you know what you're doing? Yes, one of those moments I was like, okay, that, 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 that might be, funny. it's funny as hell, but that might be, have been way too much for what that moment required. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like, I don't know if he had to go through that, that measure to do yeah. that. He probably could have done something a lot simpler, yeah. but, it, oh. but the joke landed. Yeah, and you know he knew he was pushing those guys' buttons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, for me, um, one of my favorite moments is one of the few scenes with we get with Vance where he, where we see Frank talking to him about how, and drives home the point of how much New Orleans has been screwed over because it highlights his point of view and how desperate he is and how desperate everybody else is to get their hands on these films. Well, and that's the thing I hate that was so fun underutilized about Vance because I don't, I still don't know which side Vance is on. There had you to know, be some some cut scenes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There's no way that they had um, Courtney B. Vance, and they did not have more scenes with him that were just cut out for time. Mm -hmm. There's just no way. I want, and I, which and I'll I never understand why Netflix cuts anything for time. They know we're streaming it at home. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. They yeah. know that we binge ten hours a day anyway. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like, you know, they let. <laughs> Yeah, they let Army of the Dead be 15 yeah. hours for that. Oh, Jesus. They let, yeah. let save us from that. Uh, any kind of final, before I toss it to the panel here, any kind of final thoughts here from the audience? Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. So in our last few minutes here, I'll just take it to the panel for you all to go one by one and just kind of talk about final thoughts, Project Power, as we kind of close this out. Um, I mentioned it earlier, but Project Power, I, I really liked it. Um, I think Netflix is going in the right direction with Olgar and this movie and Raising Dion, mm -hmm. which no one talks about mm -hmm. enough. And, I, and, I, second, yeah, and I, I really want to say, I really want to see Netflix continue and I, I want them, hopefully the numbers are really good that they will continue to want to do stuff like this mm -hmm. and, and have people like Jamie Foxx and Michael B. Jordan wanting to do these things and partnering with them so we can get more of, of stuff like this, like what's the pantheon of, of African American superheroes? The um, Black Man, mm -hmm. Meteor, <laughs> Meteor Man, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, you know, we have the yeah. Black Panther, but yeah. I don't really count that because that's Disney. Well, let's not forget the great Wesley Snipes. And, 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 and it's pretty much that's, that's what we got. I want more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we absolutely need more. I would love to see this come back as a series, even if we only get a movie, but a, yeah. a series would be preferable, but even if we just get a, um, and I just love Jamie Foxx. I'll watch almost anything he does, and to see him do something cool with superpowers that nobody has done before, I'd like to see them tap into wild cards you mentioned earlier, to yeah. come at that angle, uh, and just do something unique. Yeah. Mm. Final thought, Hannah. Yeah. And I, I want to see. I, I agree. I would rather see a series than another movie um, because there's just so much more that I want. But if they do a, a sequel, they could also do a third movie, and that that would be okay too. Mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> want the whole trilogy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Give me a whole trilogy. Yeah, I think that would be great. Um, but yeah, it just it was a great movie, and I, it really, it just highlighted so many things, so many themes. Um, within the black community and there's just so there's so many levels that we can't get into in just one hour yeah. of of how um, the society uses black bodies even just in the experimentation that they initially did on art um, I mean there's just so many levels to this and I think it would be great um, to explore it deeper uh, in a series. Yeah, we can't talk about it in an hour. They couldn't even do it in a two-hour movie. Yeah, no, so they there's can't. There's a lot, a lot of stuff another, to do that. Another reason to do yeah. a series. We yeah. dig, <coughs> dig into these social into issues. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. Uh, we're at time, so please feel free to just kind of go onto the app if you like. There's always a rating. Uh, there's a rating star there where you can kind of just rate the panel. Just kind of let us know how we did. We'd appreciate that just for the feedback. Otherwise, thanks to my panel, Anna. Gary, Anthony, for your contributions and just your thoughts uh, and for your plugs. Uh, people, please check out their sites and podcasts and their panels that they'll be hosting like or 
on whatever else you're doing this weekend. So just thank you all so much. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you.